Well, first of all, I would like to thank everybody who subscribes to my channel. I really appreciate you watching, and I hope 2015 is going to be a prosperous year, but mainly I hope it's going to be safe. And that's the topic for today, is safety on the lathe. We're going to revisit that, and I'm going to do a two-part video on safety on the lathe. Now, just to mention, the last video I did on this decorative band on this little box, I'm going to show you some details of that box at the end of this video. But right now, we're going to be talking about safety. The first thing I would say to you, safety is your responsibility. Now there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, myself included, lots of videos on many different topics in wood churning and woodworking and using power equipment. There's some really good stuff on YouTube, but there's some stuff that may not be all that great. One way to get around that is watch several different videos on the same topic and see the differences. See what are safe practices and kind of uh, notice what those practices are that are not so safe. And get to know the people that are demonstrating. Alan Stratton, Mike Walt in the UK. There's just a number of wood turners out there. If you see them, you know they're all about safety and they're, they're okay to watch and maybe even imitate what they do if you're not sure. Now I've got a big woodworking shop. I've got every tool known to man. I love it. But I started out a long time ago using power equipment when it wasn't all that safe. Now when I was 15 or 16 years old, I remember my mom driving up on a work site. We were roughing in houses and I was using a skill saw. Well that kind of freaked my mom out, but the point is I'm almost 65 years old and I've been using power equipment for 50 years? That's right, 50 years. Well, along the line I've learned to use a lot of different power equipment and tools and do it safely. And I've got to remember that for many of you, you're retired or you're trying to get into a hobby and you're just starting wood churning and you don't have all that experience with power equipment. So you've got to be safe. Safety is your responsibility. It's not my responsibility. I can only show you what I feel are the best practices in wood churning and the safest way to do those procedures. So, if you're not comfortable doing something, find out, ask somebody, get connected, find a friend who's more experienced than you are, get into a club around your area, take a class, research YouTube, ask somebody like myself before you proceed if you're not sure. And sometimes it comes down to this, it's simply a feeling, and I don't feel comfortable doing this. And there are times when I step in front of my chop saw, which can be a pretty powerful tool, and I'm cutting something and I'm thinking, you know what, it might be safer to do this on the bandsaw, or even with a hand tool, a hand saw. So be careful. Now, in terms of using power equipment and being safe, you don't know what you don't know. And that may be a really redundant, kind of weird thing to say, but think about it. You know, well, I'm going to go ahead and do this particular procedure without knowing that that's unsafe. If you're using a cloth on the lathe to finish something, that's very dangerous. Well, if you don't know that, it can be dangerous. So I'm going to go through very quickly a list of items. Uh, and my second video is going to be in more detail. And I'll probably show you a little bit of churning on the lathe and uh, some of those specific things that can get you into trouble. So you've gotten a new lathe. The first thing you need to do is go in your living room, sit down in an armchair, and read the manual. You may find out something that will save you or save your machine from damage. One of the things that can happen is if you leave your key in the chuck and turn that lathe on and that comes flying out at you, you got problems. So be careful about that. Always take that key chuck out and also unlock your spindle. So if I lock the spindle on my lathe and turn your lathe on, that may not hurt you, but it might hurt your lathe. Now, 
I'm going to get into a lot of the details on the lathe. When you're turning, don't leave your lathe running and walk away. Don't leave it unattended. Just flip the switch and shut it off. I've done that before myself. I'm not a perfect role model for safety or anything for that matter. So you have to determine what's safe for you. And if you leave your lathe unattended, if nothing else, it's wasting electricity. So uh, along those lines, if somebody else is in your shop, don't mess with their controls when they're running that lathe. If you turn the speed up, if you adjust the tool rest, ask their permission or tell them what you're going to do if you're in a teaching situation. Now I'm going to mention lighting for just a second. That's very important. If you have a dimly lit area, that can be really dangerous. I, I do <laughs> Now I do YouTube videos and in that production I need a well lit area. So I've got lights all over the place, but I also have lights in every machine, just about. Here's a light right here that uh, I'm trying to keep out of the way. I've got a light down here that's shining back at my work. Here's a light that you can purchase very uh, cheaply at a hardware store. This is just a, you know, they call them a trouble light. Now this is the top of my Delta MIDI lathe. And a lot of you guys probably have this lathe. This is a light that originally had a big base on it and a magnet. It was always falling off my lathe and I couldn't find a place to put it. So what I did was I took the base off. So I simply drilled two holes and attached that with nuts underneath this uh, little door here where you go to get into the belts. And that's really convenient. So I can move this and adjust it all over the place. I can move it out of the way and position that, and it's also great for filming. Now I'm standing on a mat in front of my Powermatic. You don't want your floor to be an obstacle course. You don't want cords and tools and different things you can trip on, or even a puppy dog. Well, um, I'm used to my dog in my shop, but if I got somebody in my shop, um, I may leave my dog in the house so people don't trip. This is actually a playground mat that you can get at one of those big box stores. And you can put those down in front of a machine and they're relatively cheap. It's comfortable, but it's also safe because it adds a little bit of traction when you're working. Now you can also see my floor, which is red. I bought a product, oh, it's probably been three or four years ago that I painted on the floor it's an anti-skid product that is awesome. I was slipping, and you don't want to do that. I've got a nice polished concrete floor. Um, we did a good job on that, but that brooming wears off after a while, and this is really nice. Now, after you've read your manual, and you come out in your shop, and you start to turn, maintenance of that machine is very important. And the place that I would start is your bedways. And what I do occasionally, when they get so gunked up I can't move my banjo, is I'll take some uh, sandpaper or a Scotch-Brite pad like this, this non-woven pad, and I'll clean my lathe off. I'll take some solvent of some sort and uh, clean that and get all the, the old gunk off there and whatever else is on that. Now, you can use some WD-40, you can use other kind of lubricant products and just spray that on your lathe and spread that around. Now here's something I learned from Glenn Lucas in demonstration. He said you have to be careful what you use on your uh, bedways because your banjo can actually creep and also your headstock. When you lock your headstock down and you're turning if you have something on there that's so slippery, that can be a problem and it can be dangerous. So be careful about that. But just keep those uh, bedways clean, keep them sanded down with a little 320 grit sandpaper. And after you've done that, throw the sandpaper away because that'll mess up your finish later on. The tool rest. I have an entire video on moving the tool rest. All right. 
I've taught a lot of new turners and I've taught a lot of kids and one of the hardest things to figure out is that I have to move that tool rest, adjust that so it's safe and it's in a comfortable position for you to turn. If I'm turning something and my tool rest is not positioned correctly but my tool is in this position when it should be in this position then move your tool rest. Learn to do that. Sometimes it's just a matter of having the right support or resistance for a particular tool. And I've got a lot of videos on tools. I've got one on the spindle roughing gouge and the safety elements of that tool. Not for face grain work, only for spindles. And the other tool in that family that you don't want to stick into a bowl in that position is your skew chisel. So many, many topics that we could spend hours on. You have to do some investigation. Oh, you're noticing my, my wedding ring. Nice, isn't it? Well, when I got married in 1974, I didn't have that particular ring. I had this. Well, that doesn't look much like a ring, but uh, oh, six, seven years ago, a piece of wood fell on my finger and crushed this ring, my original wedding band. So, the good news is I got a new wedding band, but I don't wear it when I'm turning. That can be nasty. If you get that caught in something, say goodbye to this finger. <laughs> All right? I mean... Come on, take your wedding band off. Now another thing I think has made me a safer turner is learning to turn with my opposite hand. Right-handed, left-handed, that can get you out of the way of that danger zone when you turn your lathe on. In the next video, in part two of this series, I will get into some of those details, like not wearing a wedding ring and not having things hanging around your neck that can get caught and have serious consequences. Sorry about that. Anyway, stay tuned. And right now I'm going to show you that little box I completed in my last video. Thank you very much and I will talk to you next time. Please be safe. Have a great, safe 2015.